What's up designers, welcome back to the channel. It's Jimmy and this channel has really turned into the things that I've been most curious about in the world of industrial design. And in the last video, I was extremely curious on which titles you might expect to get when you get your industrial design job. What are the different levels that you might get and how much you could expect to get paid within each level. So if you haven't checked that video out, the link should be down below. That got me to really think about who are the most accomplished and who has made the most money in the world of industrial design? So I did a ton of research and I found myself on a couple different websites that have their own list of some of the greatest industrial designers. This is a very subjective thing. There's a ton of incredibly great, incredibly talented industrial designers, but the five that I'm gonna go over in this video seem to be the ones that have showed up the most within these lists. And so I'm gonna be talking about the things that they've done Done, what have they been the most well known for as well as which industry which schools they've gone into and then of course how much money they have made and you want to stick around because the industrial designer that has made the most money might not be the one that you are thinking so I hope you stick around and watch this video to the very end to hear who it is by no means is this video going to be a, the top five richest industrial designers. It's really just gonna be the last two designers that I talk about in this video, which I can guarantee you are the richest, the ones that have made the most money with industrial design. And the first three are really just gonna be incredibly famous, great, most accomplished industrial designers. So as industrial designers, we design products and products can be found in a ton of different industries. You could be designing footwear design or furniture design or outdoor gear or consumer electronics like myself. And so this first industrial designer, he is gonna be the most well known for his work in the automotive field. And like myself, I found myself to pursue industrial design because of my love for car design. This first designer, his name is Giorgetto Giugiaro. I'm sorry about the pronunciation, but he is an Italian automotive designer and one of the greatest industrial designers out there. And his work can be seen across of over a hundred different car designs across a slew of car brands such as Alfa Romeo, Aston Martin, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Ferrari, and Ducati, and so much more. Some of the most well-known works of his are his works with BMW and the M1, which is an extremely iconic car for BMW. Another very extremely iconic car is his work with the Aston Martin DB4, which of course the DB5 was extremely based off the DB4, and the DB5 was the James Bond 007 car. Another extremely famous car that he's designed is also the DeLorean DMC-12, which of course is the car shown in the movie series Back to the Future. Outside of his work with automobile design, he's also done a ton of work designing camera bodies for Nikon or even food design. If you guys haven't heard of food design, essentially, it's actually the, the design of food. A lot of processed foods are manufactured, they're made, they're, they're mass produced, and so there needs to be a design to them that appeals to the consumer. Giorgetto, he also designed pasta as well, and being Italian, designing pasta makes sense. He's also designed firearms, motorcycles, as well as furniture. It's very interesting. A lot of the designers on this list is actually going to share a lot of common things, such as their work in furniture and their work in architecture. All right, moving on to the second industrial designer on this list is actually going to be a couple, and their names are Charles and Ray Eames. So if you're a student, you probably have heard of them before, especially seen their work. They're both well known for the dining chair as well as the Eames lounge chair. I remember when I was a student, I would always constantly see the Eames lounge chair being brought up by other students and watching documentaries and learning all about industrial design. They're both well known for their innovation in the use of fiberglass and manufacturing with implementing it into their furniture design as well as the molding of plywood, which of course you can see in the Eames lounge chair. 
Their company, the Eames office, has been working extremely closely with Herman Miller as well as Vitra. These are the two authorized manufacturers that manufactures Charles and Ray Eames designs. There's a ton of other different brands that make similar designs and knockoffs as the Eames chair, but Herman Miller and Vitra are the sole authorized manufacturers to design them. They're the legit one. Along with their incredible work with furniture design, they're also extremely well known for their work in film, graphics design, fine art, and of course, architecture. All right, moving on to top three greatest industrial designers. These are gonna be the designers that I'm most extremely excited to talk about with you guys. So the third designer is gonna be Dieter Rams, and he is a German industrial designer, and he is most well known for his work during Braun, where he held a chief design officer title. So if you guys don't know what a chief design officer title is, it's essentially the highest title you can hold at a company by being an industrial designer. Definitely check my last video. The link should be down below. Peter Rams actually studied architecture in Weisbaden School of Art in Germany. He is extremely well known for his principles of good design, which you can find in a lot of industrial design documentaries. His principles of good design are good design is innovative. Good design makes products useful. Good design is aesthetic. Good design makes the product understandable. Good design is unobtrusive. Good design is honest. Good design is long lasting. Good design is thorough down to the very last detail. Good design is environmentally friendly and good design is minimal. Minimal, minimal, minimal is his design philosophy. The minimalist type of style I feel is the current design trend nowadays. Things generally like to be very geometric and minimal and simple with very geometric shapes. And so Dieter Rams was the pioneer in this design style. And of course, we can see this with Apple products and Johnny Ives, which has been extremely influenced by Dieter Rams and his style. And you could see a lot of resemblance between the iPod and Dieter Rams work right here. Some of the most famous Dieter Rams work at Braun are the SK4 record player, his Braun film slider projector line, as well as the Braun calculator, which iOS, the iPhone operating system, took great inspiration with their UI design of the calculator based off of Dieter Rams' calculator at Braun. Of course, since Dieter Rams went to school for architecture, he's extremely well known for his work in the architecture fields as well as furniture. Oh, all right, we're down to the last two designers on this list, and like I said, these are the two probably most famous, most accomplished, and definitely the most richest industrial designers to ever walk the face of this earth. And you might be surprised who number two actually is, but it's gonna be Sir Johnny Ives. You probably thought he was number one, and I definitely did too before I did a lot of this research, but Johnny Ives is number two on this list, and he is most well known for his work at Apple. He started actually working at Apple in 1992 when Steve Jobs came back to Apple where he was kicked out before. So Johnny Ives actually left his own design firm, Tangerine, moved all the way to California and started working at Apple where he held a VP of industrial design title, which is a very high title to have. But after a while, he became the chief design officer at Apple, again, like I said, is the highest title you can get as an industrial designer in a company. And this is actually particularly very impressive because Apple is actually the biggest company in the world by market cap over $2 trillion. They're obviously a household name with the likes of the iPhone, the iMac, their computers, their MacBook Pros. You know, they're, they're in the fabric of society. Everybody knows it. Everybody probably has an Apple product and this is extremely impressive personally for me because you know they're a premium brand they're not just a cheap brand usually cheaper brands are the ones that are the most popular ones because they're the most affordable ones but Apple being Apple being such a premium brand they 
just seem to be able to sell so much of it and people just gobble up their products. And so that is a crazy achievement to reach the highest level at Apple, only second to Steve Jobs at one point in time. So a lot of you guys probably know by now, but Johnny Ives left Apple in 2019, where he started his own firm with Mark Newsom, another very talented, very famous industrial designer. And they named their firm Love From. And so there's news articles now actually where their client is actually Ferrari. So now they're probably gonna start making something for a Ferrari. Maybe it's their cars, maybe because they have a huge background with consumer electronics and cars nowadays are becoming more electrified. The future is EV vehicles and you know, maybe the two kind of come together. So it's gonna be an extremely exciting thing to see what Love From actually does for Ferrari. So let me go ahead and throw out some interesting facts of Johnny Ives for you guys. He actually started industrial design based off his love of cars as a child. And so now actually having Ferrari as a client, I'm pretty sure it's like going full circle for him. He graduated at the school of Northumbria University in Newcastle, where he got his degree in industrial design. Some of the awards that he's achieved are he's been appointed as the Royal Designer for industry in the UK. He was also knighted as well, so he was the commander of the Order of the British Empire. You know, he did work at Apple, and like I said, Apple is the number one largest company by market cap in the world. And so it's a very interesting thing how much you think Apple paid him. So this is probably not 100% accurate. Online research shows that he was paid a base salary of $30 million per year. That's base salary. And probably received around $25 million in stock bonuses. And so usually when numbers like these come out, like like uh, how much somebody is worth net worth wise and how much they got paid. Usually they seem to be under what the actual truth really is. So they're saying he was paid $30 million. You know, maybe it's more, but that is just an insane amount of money to have as a base salary. But, you know, it makes sense with a company as large as Apple is and how successful they are. And so the research that I found that shows his net worth is actually around $700 hundred million dollars which is 300 million shy of a billion dollars <laughs> crazy crazy numbers right there 700 million dollar net worth if you guys don't know what net worth is is essentially everything that you own Add it all up together, the price of your house, the price of your assets, the price of your cars, the price of your stocks, and everything that you own minus your liabilities, that is what net worth is. And so Johnny Ives has $700 million, which again, like I said, most likely it's probably more than that. And we finally made it to number one, guys. And thank you so much for sticking around all the way up until this point. If you enjoyed this video so far, please help me out by giving me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as well. It really, really helps out with the channel. So thank you so much. All right, guys, the number one designer on this list, the most richest industrial designer is James Dyson. Of course, he started the Dyson company, most well known for their vacuums. Of course, now they have other products like the blow dryer and the fan and a couple of other products, but they're most well known for their innovation in the vacuum. And so with the vacuum, actually, he was the inventor of the duo cyclone bagless vacuums. So Mr. James Dyson, his message about designing is actually all about failure. You gotta fail and you gotta learn from each failure. He said that he's designed over 5,000, specifically 5,127 prototypes of his vacuum before he got it right. So that means that he's designed 5,126 vacuums that were failures, but he says that he's learned in each and every prototype. And so his message, of course, is don't fear failure. So I'm gonna go ahead and spew off some of the awards that James Dyson has achieved, similar to Johnny Ives. He was knighted and he is the commander of the order 
of the British Empire. James Dyson attended the Royal College of the Arts. He has his own foundation, the James Dyson Foundation. He also has his own institute, the Dyson Institute of Engineering and Technology in England. So James Dyson obviously owns Dyson, and if you look up his net worth, they're saying that he's worth about $19 billion. And of course, his company is actually not publicly traded. It's actually still a private company. And so it kind of makes you think if it became a public company and was receiving all of that shareholder money coming all in, I'm sure a lot of people love their Dysons and would love to buy into that company. I'm sure James Dyson would be even more wealthy than what he actually is. And so that is actually incredible, an industrial designer who who went to school for industrial design and became a billionaire. A billionaire, that is insane. I hope to one day become a billionaire myself, and so we'll see if that happens, but for right now, I'm trying to reach my first million. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, definitely hit that thumbs up button. It'll really, really honestly help this YouTube channel out. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this, and of course, leave a comment down below. I read all of them, and uh, let me know if there's any thoughts or anything you'd like me to talk about in the next video. All right, guys, my name is Jimmy, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.